I'm David Shank, author of The Forgetting and senior advisor to Cure Alzheimer's Fund, a not-for-profit scientific consortium dedicated to ending Alzheimer's as soon as possible. We bring you a series of discussions throughout the year to help improve understanding of the disease. Today we're speaking with Dr. Murali Duraswamy, professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Duke University and a member of our research consortium. Dr. Duraswamy, thank you so much for joining us. A pleasure. Um, is it true that more women have Alzheimer's than men? In the U.S., two-thirds of all Alzheimer cases are in women. So if you think roughly there are about five million or so cases of Alzheimer's in the U.S., two-thirds of them, fully two-thirds of them are women, and we don't fully know why. Um, what about worldwide? Does the, do those statistics hold up worldwide generally? Uh, I think worldwide also there are probably more women with Alzheimer's than men for one single fact, which is that in every single country, regardless of economic status of development of that country, women tend to live longer than men. Mm -hmm. And so there are more older women than men. As a result, there are more women with Alzheimer's. Than okay, so we're starting to get into the why a little bit. Correct. But it must get more complicated than that because it's a whole science now. And you approach this through big data, right? You do a lot of computational work to try to see if there are hidden things in, in gender and sex that explain that's these right. differences. That's right. You know, for a long time, we thought, uh, you know, the fact that women had more Alzheimer's was an artifact of the fact that they lived longer. But some recent studies suggested that that may not be the fact. Uh, that virtually at every decade of life in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, the risk for Alzheimer's in women may be twice as high as wow. it is in men. Wow. So we think that the secret lies in pulling together all of the different disparate pieces of information that have been collected through various research studies, whether it be genetics, whether it be brain scans, whether it be clinical data. And we want to integrate all that using a technique called data mining hmm. to try to see if we can come up with some new clues. And how long have you been at it, and have you gotten anywhere yet? Do we know anything in this, in this approach? Yes, we've been at it for about a year. Uh, we're now analyzing a big national study called the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative. This is a study that has followed 1,500 people, some with Alzheimer's, some without Alzheimer's, some at very high risk for Alzheimer's, some normal controls. It's followed them for up to 10 years, and it's collected a range of data on them, from clinical data to cognitive data, functional data, caregiver data, genetic data, brain scans, spinal fluid, et cetera. And our first finding is we analyzed a subgroup of this data set, people with mild cognitive impairment. And we found that amongst people with mild cognitive impairment, women tend to develop Alzheimer's at a much faster rate than men. So again, confirming some of our sort of uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, we don't fully know why yet. Mm -hmm. So where to go to from here? Do you stick with the, the big data approach or do you then branch off and do other sorts of research to answer these? So the next step that we are trying to pursue now is try to understand the genetic underpinnings uh, that may lie behind the subgroup of women that develop dementia at faster rates than men. So we are now uh, pursuing an approach called genetic crosstalk. Previously, you know, people would look at individual biomarkers uh, as isolated entities. So yeah, you have amyloid plaques building up in the brain. Yeah, you have tangles building up in the brain. Yeah, you may have some shrinkage of the memory centers. We're trying to see how all these different pieces of information crosstalk with one another. And that's what we're trying to understand through a technique uh, uh, called data mining. What specifically is Cure Alzheimer's Fund doing? What, what are they sponsoring? And, and how is it, does it have any kind of unique flavor in a way that you weren't able to do research in, from, you know, with other funding? Absolutely. The, the project we're doing is very high risk. Um, and uh, even the fact that we are studying sex differences was not a very popular topic to fund through traditional granting means. Mm. Uh, so this project is allowing us to study sex differences in this database for the first time in a very comprehensive type of manner. Hmm. I'm going to ask you to look out and, and make some guesses here, but do you think that ultimately we're talking about learning so much about the differences that A, we might be learning about different types of disease or even subtly different diseases, and B, would that mean different, if so, would that mean different treatments? Literally, sometimes maybe different drugs for different uh, genders. Very much so. The future we're headed to uh, is a type of medicine called personalized medicine, where we think every individual with the disease has a very unique form of Alzheimer's. Right. So they may not be just one type of Alzheimer's, they may be 
five million types of Alzheimer's in the US. Mm. And the core of personalized medicine first step is to try to understand how men with Alzheimer's differ from women with Alzheimer's in terms of their biology. Mm. We think with this project, we'll start to sort of get some initial insights and then we can replicate, see if we can conform our findings in other bigger studies. Ultimately, yes, why not? If we uncover that men have a vascular pathway to developing Alzheimer's and women have an amyloid plaque pathway to developing Alzheimer's, then yes, we will use different treatments. Right. So ultimately, this will also be very collab collaborational, if I can use that word, because once you start to develop some core findings, people from all, all different uh, facets of Alzheimer's research will want to know more about that so they can apply their treatments and their other investigations towards Very it. much yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my uh, principal collaborator on this project, Dr. Nagisa Samatoba, is a woman and she's one of the leading computational uh, scientists in the world. Uh, I'm collaborating with the geneticist, Dr. Rudy Tanzi, who is one of the world's best known geneticists. I'm collaborating with another uh, geneticist in Indiana, Dr. Andrew Sakin. I'm coll collaborating with a range of data scientists around the country, many of whom are already funded by Cure Alzheimer's. So one of the theories that we're working on is women have a slightly more exaggerated immune response. And that comes from some findings that Cure Alzheimer's has already funded at uh, MGH and some other Harvard labs. So we're trying to see if those same findings can be detected in this clinical sample. So yes, there's a lot of cross-pollination amongst the Cure Alzheimer's Fund uh, research. Hmm. And I imagine this is a technology story as well. There's probably a lot that you're able to do now for pennies on the dollar that just would have been too expensive or just impossible to do a few years ago. Absolutely. Computing power is enormous, and some of the new artificial intelligence and machine learning and big data techniques that are available today were not available before. We also are able to do sequencing of uh, people's uh, genetic uh, genomes and proteome and other kinds of sort of molecular level data that we were not able to do before. I'll tell you something very simple that uh, would shock most people. You know, women and men differ at a fundamental level in the X and the Y chromosome, right? Women have two right. copies of the X chromosome, men have usually an X and a Y. When I ask most people, do the X and the Y chromosome have the same number of genes? Oh, most people say, well, you know, men, they're bigger, taller, their Y chromosome usually has uh, more genes. No. The X chromosome has more than a thousand genes and the Y chromosome is puny. It only has 50 genes. Mm. So if you think about it, men have 20 times fewer genes on this one sex dependent chromosome than women. Should that not influence Alzheimer's in right. some way? Why? We would be naive to think that it has no effect on brain function. Right, right, right. Absolutely. So. Um Tell me what you can't do now. It's, are you, are you uh, somehow bounded by a technological limitation that you are waiting to break through, or is it a funding limitation or something? What's, what, what, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting stuff going on, but what, what are you, what's, what's your limit here? So let's say in our particular analysis, we find that there are differences between men and women. The next step would be then to try to find another large data set that we can go try to replicate these findings mm -hmm. because our initial findings are still preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to confirm those findings. And then the, the step after that is to try to see if we can come up with a drug that could target the mechanisms that we have identified and then test that drug in a clinical trial mm. to see if that drug truly works differently in men versus women to, to alter their risk. Now, the beauty is if we can find out why it is that women have a higher risk or whether there's a different pathway involved, they may be lifestyle interventions that we can put into place. Right. For example, we know that men are at higher risk by developing heart disease and stroke at a younger age. And if that has a bearing on Alzheimer's, then we can intervene at an appropriate time point in midlife to propose a more aggressive, uh, a vascular friendly lifestyle intervention. If on the other hand, women are more likely to develop amyloid plaque buildup, that's what the early research is hinting at, then perhaps they are the ones we could focus all the plaque busting drugs on. Mm. So, so these are the kinds of uh, uh, future possibilities that the research may uncover. Wow. So we're going to be hearing a lot more about this in all yes. sorts of different facets. I'm facets. really grateful to Q Alzheimer's Fund for funding this uh, research. And I think really uh, we have a lot of lessons to learn from heart disease. We went almost 20, 30 years thinking that men and women were the same. We would test men and all of the treatments from men would be applied to women thinking that men and women are the same. Right. Even today, Virtually all mouse studies in the lab right. of Alzheimer's 
are done in male mice. Right, we're trying to and, change that. And we yes, extrapolate yes. the findings thinking male mice are the same as female mice, right, right, right. and male mice are the same as male humans and female humans. Right, right. So there's a lot of, so, a lot of genders to break through yes. in, in, different, in all kinds of different species. Yes. Well, thank you for taking the time. Absolute this is really pleasure and honor, of course, to have read your books. Oh, thank well, you so much. Uh, I paid him to say that. All right, thank you. <laughs>